classic Ruby. Uh, hello, my internet friends. Three, two, two, one, one. live. This is how live Facebook works, Ruby. I'll spin the camera around soon and let you guys see what I'm having to work with here. It's okay, Ruby. Thanks. So I'm standing here with my best friend, Stu. How are you, Stu? Very good. Welcome back. Good to see you, bro. <laughs> Happy. So you just got back from Papua New Guinea? Papua New Guinea. And Haiti. And Haiti. We haven't had just a chance to three. catch up. No. Okay. We'll talk about many things today. You might see that I'm wearing many layers. It's because we're about to jump on a helicopter and go to a glacier and spend the day, maybe the night. This glacier. is how Kiwi dresses to go on a glacier. Soon you'll be nude, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm actually ready. I have a brand new pair of underwear on for that. That's good. Straight That's out good. of the box. It won't be brand new for long. <laughs> That's we're true. Gonna, those things will be shredded by the end of the night. So, <laughs> all right, so uh, we're really here to talk about uh, peace in 10,000 hands. We're sitting here in your studio right now in Queenstown Studio 66, standing, technically, you're correct. Now, uh, before we talk about all the other crazy stuff we're doing today, give us a description, what is peace in 10,000 hands, and then we'll take a little tour and see what's going on. Mm. Well, your timing is good because we're just about to rip the whole gallery out and rebuild in here and make it super awesome. So this could be like the last thing that people see in here. So basically, peace in 10,000 hands. As you know, we're photographing a single white rose, which is an ancient symbol of peace in the hands of 10,000 people from every single country on the planet. It's a glorious and ambitious project. Thank you. You've been working on this ever since I met you, probably mm -hmm. about three years ago. And... Uh, in the meantime, you and I have had like amazing adventures all around the world. You've taken the white rose with you. Mm. We spent about a month together in Antarctica. Mm. Do you remember all these Antarctica photos? He was my Antarctica buddy. Mm. And you got great photos down there with the white rose. Mm. Um, but like, give us a few other highlights before we walk around and look at some of the photos. Well, a, a trivia question. Who, who is the person in the world that I photographed the rose in their hands the most? Uh, Ruby. No, no, we're oh. waiting for Ruby. She's, I on, thought, a, she's yeah. on a transformational relook situation, so I think she might want to wait till February the 14th or something. All it's right. You. Oh, it is me. It's you. It is me. Yes, yeah, you. I do hold the world record for holding the rose. Yeah, you do. Oh, no. I've held it even more times than the Dalai Lama. What so time? I've got that. Here, let, me, let me spin this around. Every day at 11 11, my alarm okay. goes 11 11. 11 11. Uh, here's uh, Ruby, by the way. Hi, Tim. The audience Ruby. loves Ruby. Let me Ruby say hello to people here. Uh, John Hawk from Northeast Pennsylvania is watching. Hello, Dennis Austin. from Austin. Oh, Austin. Uh, Sarah from Dallas. What's going on? Kyle Tequiwi says, you're the man, Stu. I thought hello. I was going to say, Kyle Tequila. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, Cigar from Minnesota. Cigar. What's going on? What a cool That's name. amazing. So anyway, where are we? I'm holding the camera now, by the way. I took yeah. over just for a moment, Ruby. No offense. Okay. We so are in the six, ultimate man cave. Uh, this is all our equipment. Maybe we'll end the show here by showing all the stuff that we're going to be taking um, on the helicopter up to the glacier today. Um, check out this. I'm super jealous. When I saw this place, I wanted to build a man cave like this, too. Pinball machines, pool tables, a bar. A bar. Like yeah, we need a bar. Old school 1970s couches. Complete with coffee um, table, right where you need. So this is perfect. this is a man couch. I'll demonstrate because <laughs> what men what men hate to do, and I'll even do things like if you yeah. drink beer, you size, you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, and you get your beer or the remote. But here, you just do this. Look at that. It's a perfect Genius. bicep action. The whole body can relax. <laughs> this, this, the one muscle group. Oh, perfect. Amazing. Uh, I'm starting to make the sounds my father does when he stands up and sits down. <laughs> uh, Ruby, do you think that Stu and I are ridiculous together? 100%. Sorry. You deserve better, Cancel. Ruby. You deserve better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've got video games. We love bringing our kids over here to have like pizza parties. We've got foosball, Nerf guns. You never told me pizza party? Yeah, let me show you yeah. this. I'm going to show you what else. Okay. So every, so every day I take a photo of my phone at 11.11. And this was my car this morning. It snowed here. Yeah, it was. We talked about the big snow. We had a live snow, uh, snowpocalypse show oh, earlier. Wow. Snowpocalypse. We should probably okay. demonstrate my other couch, which is for, for comfort, but not for drinking ease. <laughs> <laughs> two couches That's for two purposes. That's so we need to sleep after that second beer. <laughs> um, Are you going to talk? 
you, you talk. I'll, I'm just going to do something over here. I, I will talk. <laughs> All right, so Stu, in classic Kiwi sense, is incred incredibly humble. Um, he doesn't talk about all these awesome things he's doing with this project, but he has photographed the Dalai Lama. <laughs> uh, over there is Demi Moore. Oh, look at that. See, I saw, oh. <laughs> 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 so, the show. That was a lucky shot. That was a very, that was a very lucky shot. Oh. <laughs> In the jugular. Man down. Man down. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Stop it. They, they, all right. Cheap. Cheap and fun. Okay. Cheap and fun. Right. Um, so, t tell us what. T tell us something. Uh, what's happening with your project? How can people take part? Can they buy art? Ooh, can they become a patron? If people like this idea, which I'm sure they do, piece in ten thousand hands. How can they get involved? How can they, well, you can follow us online, piece in ten thousand hands. Mm -hmm. We've just made these super cool things here. I don't think you've seen these. I might um, this is um, so. This is a cast crystal um, of the rose that the Dalai Lama held and blessed, and also Archbishop Desmond Tutu. So everyone holds the same rose. So we made a crystal rose, so we sell them. You can check that out. Oh, it's quite heavy. Yeah, it's really heavy. It's lead crystal. How do you make it? Uh, well, we, you make a wax one, and then you make a silicon mold, and then you make a whole lot more of them, basically. And then you, um, you they're, they're cast in a furnace. And we've got books. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's that. And art. And Look, people can, can buy your art, right? Yeah, you can, you can buy art. We do lots of different kinds of art. Neon, white boxes. We're doing sculptures. I'm doing a gun series, so I'm making replica guns out of crystal. And have you seen my tank barrel? I have seen the tank barrel. I wish yeah. you had one here. Yeah, we're getting one sent down. This is a whole part of this ripping out the gallery and rebuilding it. Yeah. Hmm. Can you show us, show us maybe two of the photos, three of the photos, and tell us a little story? Yes. Tell you a story. Okay. Yes. So, um, so this photograph here. So we spent a couple of months in um, in India, mm. and the trip started in Rishikesh on the banks of Mata Ganga, and uh, in the lower parts of the Himalayas. And so we spent quite a long time in this town, and it's sort of very spiritual. There's a lot of you know the Beatles used to go there. There's a lot of ashrams and that kind of thing, and everyone kind of makes their way in terms of how they can make money. And this guy had a beaten bit of steel sort of into a wok situation. And um, he had popcorn. And he was selling popcorn. So the, the smoke is from the fire that he had his little thing over him. So I had him thrust his hand into there with the rose. I love that shot. So when I started the project, I only photographed roses in yeah. people's hands. There's no facsimile of their face. So we started in New York about three weeks before Sandy, Mega Storm Sandy. And um, I stayed for the storm, and that's where I took my first photograph, which is actually that photograph over there. It's a bit dark. Maybe we can go over there. We've got a light. Let's go. Okay, we'll go. And um, so initially, um, it was just about hands, because I think our hands express our humanity like no other part of our body. They show what we do and think and how we act and what we create every day. So, um, I'll get rid of that. Um, yeah, so this work's called Hurricane. Can you see it on the screen? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And um, basically this is, uh, you can see her fingernails are really chipped in a whole lot of galleries and different situations in uh, the lower part of Manhattan were consumed by this significant sort of, we were told, 14 foot wall of water, which the first time in over 100 years all the subways were full of water and anything below that point kind of filled up. And so she had a whole lot of friends that were artists and their galleries were flooded. So this was her in there helping out. And she was really, they took this on Bleecker Street, and she was really embarrassed, you know, about her nails and didn't yeah. want me to photograph her. But um, so that's the first shot that I took. It was really hard for me to walk up to random strange people in the street and say, okay, this wine glass on my desk is not mine, by the way. I have no idea how that got there. <laughs> <laughs> Let random people in here. Oh, we'll have, we'll have a look at this too. And then, um, well, I just saw a comment, by the way, from my friend Cliff Bays. He wants me to bring you to <gasps> Burning Man. Burning Man. <laughs> Never going. Not true. No. <laughs> and so this work here, so I photograph people's fists, and because they type, they write things on their fists, like love, hate, and, um, and um, yeah, so this one here says love, life. And so that's actually the tattoo, and then we make neon out of that. 
and um, yeah, so we've got a, it's part of our Neon series. By the way, Ruby, feel free to interrupt us with any questions yeah. anytime. I have, you don't uh, just have to be a, a robot. <laughs> Especially weight loss questions. I'm, I can just yeah. talk all day about that. Right, we're in this oh, I'm sure you can. Yeah. I do have a question. Um, Sarah Willingham is asking, what did you mean that everybody holds the same one? The same one? Oh, the same rose. It's a silk rose, so I travel with the rose. Yeah, so um, Dalai Lama, Ringo Starr, Demi Moore, Danny DeVito. So all of the, it's it's not a project about celebrity. Yeah. But obviously, when someone famous holds it, like that's Jamie Lee Curtis over there, they propel the conversation. Sure. Yeah. But you know, some of the most interesting people are the people you meet in their village when you, you know, I, I travelled down the Armenian, Iranian, Iraq, and Syrian border. Um, not so long ago, and I was staying in Kurdish villages and talking to people, and you know, the stories that you hear are phenomenal, and you know, it's that it's that shared humanity. People deal with it differently. People can feel the energy. Yeah. There's the, the ashes of a of a young dead girl, um, who was her mother just rubbed a little bit onto the, onto them. a lot of people break down because in this moment you're standing representing peace to the whole of the world. So some people deal with it differently. I'm well, sure a lot of people are very sensitive to vibrations and very empathetic to that stuff, mm. especially when you know that the Dalai Lama has held the rose, mm. Tutu, and all these people. Mm. So speaking of the same rose, I have a funny story for you. We were in Antarctica. And we got woken up like at zero dot dark thirty by Hef. Yes. Remember Hef knocked on our door. Hef is our helicopter pilot down there, and he's like super he's hardcore Kiwi. Yeah. And so he goes, he goes, get on the helicopter, boys. We're like, whoa. And then we like get out of the bed. We just gather our stuff, jump in the helicopter. Then he flies us out to Shackleton's hut, mm. which is very hard to get to. Yeah. It's like an hour long uh, helicopter flight. Mm. So he dropped us off there. We ended up spending most of the day there, and we got on the radio because he forgot the rose. Remember? Yeah. And then Hef had to go back <laughs> to our bunk beds. He had to like root around inside of there, and he, he anyway he eventually found this silk rose, jumped back on the helicopter, and then he flew back to Shackleton's hut, captured like one of the most famous places in Antarctica. And like he like circled the hut and then he like dropped the rose out of the helicopter. We had to get it and then uh, this is all just a huge effort so I could hold the rose in Shackleton's hut. Yeah. And you put one on the bed. And, yeah. 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 That was we great. actually yeah, the shots the shot's not here, but it was the, the first time I ever photographed the rose on an inanimate object. Because mm. apparently that was the, the stretcher bed that Shackleton spent two years on. He right. spent two years in that hut. Uh, that's called Shackleton's Legacy. Yeah. God, I forgot we sent him back for that. But you, <laughs> but you were like celebrity media. Well. So you could have called in a bottle of vodka or whatever you want. I don't, I, don't think we, I don't think we used the title admirably enough. Yeah, I guess we could have worked it more. Yeah. Uh, I'm not too needy though. Okay, so what's next? We're going to try to do another live show. Uh, we're going to get on a helicopter later. We're not sure if it's going to take off because of inclement weather conditions. Uh, we but come on an inversion layer. We do have an inversion layer. Yeah, we do. Inversion layer. Come over here. I'll show you what we're, gonna, what we're packing. Okay. What we're packing. Show you all of our goodies. Um, we had to do quite a bit of preparation because what they're going to do is they're going to drop us off at this place called Ernslaw Burn. Have you been there? No, I haven't. Similarly, have. It's incredible. Yeah. Like it's I think like you can hike there, but it takes many days to yeah, hike there. Seven days. Similarly yeah. said, if you get, she's going to give me a paleo bar for the night. And if you said right. if you get stuck, you can have this paleo bar. And she said if you get really stuck, there's a cave. And if you get really, really stuck, you can hike out, but it takes seven days. Yeah, that's, that would be a problem. Last time we were there, actually, we saw a woman hiking barefooted through the river. You making it up? No, not kidding. No, it no. Was, you, you saw it too, <laughs> yeah, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, Ruby she was She was there. just hiking away, just powering down like the river. It's right off of a glacier, and she's hiking barefooted. True Kiwi woman. Okay. Yeah. So, this is only a, a mere tip of the iceberg as to everything that we're bringing on this, okay? By the way, oh, here, this is a good example. I've never done this before. So, this is our, our you're like, this is the... Uh, 20 liter, and this is the 30 liter. Okay, I vastly prefer this one because it's much more svelte, like stew. It's sort of the stew of the backpack world. Um, but I like this one; it's much more tidy. But I got a lot of junk, right? Shadow art. <laughs> it's a dog. All right. So what's in here, pray tell? Um, this has my main camera in it. I'm going here to Ernslaw Burn for a secret reason. And you don't even know why, I have no right? Idea. I just called you last night and I said, yeah. hey, you want to jump on a helicopter and go? You were like, let's do it. Um, but I will tell you on the way, but I will not reveal it mm -hmm. on this live broadcast. I got to leave, I got to leave the audience wanting a little Ooh, bit. A little you bit see? Of mystery. That's the key, the black box. 
J.J. Abrams' black box. Mm. You never talk about what's in the black box. You only talk about the black box. So this is uh, the camera I'm taking. This is the Sony A7R Mark II. Um, right on it, right now I have the 24 to 240. Um, I have a, a cornucopia of other lenses in here, some Leica lenses, and that's what uh, Stu got me into. He got me into this Leica world. Um, I got all kinds of other goodies in there. Oh, really? That's my. Oh, I need that adapter. Yeah. Just when I need it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, so I've got all this stuff. Um, I've got uh, these things so I can see at night. We might get stuck there overnight because they're going to do a drop off. We're hoping we get ah. stuck there overnight. You're not taking that. Let me show you this. You're actually taking that. Do you know what a blunt is? It's an umbrella. But do you know the blunt umbrella? No, it's a club. Okay, I'm going to blow your mind. Okay. Is this the inside out one? This is the one that is it possible to go inside out. Okay. Do you want me to breathe, about on, this? Do you want me to breathe on it heavily? Good. <laughs> so, so this is like the ultimate umbrella. It's a New Zealand umbrella. Is that right, Ruby? Yes. Are you actually taking an umbrella? It, How are you going to hold it? What on? if it rains? You've got a jacket. <laughs> what if it rains? I've got to take photos, right? I'm yeah. going for a reason. Okay. I'm not just going to uh, hike. So you'll be holding anyway, the umbrella. So this doesn't exactly. I'm the umbrella boy. Um, but the bigger one's oh. expensive. It's like over 100 bucks. It never goes inside out. Guess how many they sell a month? I was guess. 1,000. 50,000 umbrellas a month they sell. Wow. But how cool would it be to have an umbrella that never goes inside out? Buy, are you taking, are you taking um, a tripod? Yes, but it's not in the, it's in the car. It's in the car. Uh, anyway, we're taking tents. Are you bringing a sleeping bag? No, but I have plastic pants and a jacket, so I'll <laughs> so just make no, myself plastic, plastic pants. pants. Yeah, no, I have to use like a human sleeping bag. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the plan. You know what would be cool? If I had plastic pants and they zipped, and we could like zip them together. You know how you could zip sleeping bags together? If we could like zip our pants together. <laughs> So you want to sit no out that. while I'm holding your umbrella? That would be great. Then we would be Sip completely snow. wrapped up in plastic. We would. Yeah. Maybe we could think of other people we would like to be zipped up with. <laughs> <Get at each other. laughs> yeah, last resort. Yeah, last resort. Okay, anyway, that's a little uh, amuse bouche. Um, hopefully we'll get on the, the chopper later and go get some photos. I uh, hope you enjoy. Oh wait, before we leave, there's lots of geeks watching, like me. And people always want to know about your camera equipment. So tell yeah. us what you're. What I should you I share my bag down here? And what you're into. So I use Leica. So all of the portraits are taken on the medium format S, but they've got this nifty Leica SL, which is a uh, it's their professional shooting camera, so mirrorless, with a giant piece of um, 24 to 90 piece of glass on it. So um, and I've got an adapter that takes all the M lenses. And I'm also taking up my monochrome, which is the black and white camera. You know, right. Delicious. Basically, there's no RGB on the... Um, now, talk about how that camera. sensor is different, because I don't know much about black and white photography. You know a ton about it, mm -hmm. and that's a lot of what you do as you look around the studio. Mm -hmm. So, if you are just doing a completely monochromatic mm -hmm. sensor, how does that differ from a color sensor? Why mm -hmm. is it better? So if, if you're geeky, I guess the best way to explain it is like this, is trying to do a, a black and white print from a color negative. And so what the sensor is doing, depending whether it's RGB or they've stacked it RGB to get more on, they are making, they're making sort of black and white out of color, which is kind of a bit weird. So what they've done is this is just a, mon this is just a monochrome sensor. So I've been told that there's 22 million shades of gray I mean, even if someone's out by five million. But the human eye, in terms of tints and tones, if you get a pot of black paint and a pot of gray paint, can only tell 99 shades. Mm -hmm. So everything just has this sort of liquid 3D effect. So when you're taking landscapes, or I find particularly landscapes and portraits in it, they mm -hmm. just look nuts. And I, basically, they come out of the camera and you, um, you just don't need to edit them. They just look delicious. I think every camera should have black and white in it, or every, every image, you know. Ilford, I agree. Ilford grade five paper. I've seen, so we'll, we'll link to these. I'll have the other Stu, Stu Davidson, uh, be sure to link to your work, link to your website. Um, also, Stu does Facebook Live stuff. Are you enjoying Facebook Live? Yeah. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. Although, for the last eight weeks, I've been without reception, basically. So There's I'm nothing apart from the beginning. No. Uh -huh. So my Garoka one was, if this was live, yeah. and you could hear me now, this is what I would say.
And when I recorded it, it was live, but now, of course, it's boring and old. You know? Yeah, not live, not cool, that's what they say. Exactly. Well, all right. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you Goodbye. for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Ruby. We tease you a lot, but we are Ruby. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ruby. Thanks a lot. Okay. And scene.